Hello and welcome to my next playthrough. I'm going to be doing a playthrough, obviously, of Claustrophobia. Uh, it's basically a two-player uh, tactical miniatures game. It's fairly quick. The rules are fairly easy. Uh, and I will be playing the first mission uh, of the base game. I just have the base game. I do not have the expansion yet. And it's called The Survivors. And we start off with the Redeemer here. Uh, and we have two, they are called Condemned Blades for Hire, and one Condemned Brute. And we'll go over and look at their player cards in a minute. Uh, this is the first tile. These tiles are very large, um, very nicely done. All the components in this game are absolutely top-notch, uh, really, really nice. Basically, it's a tile laying game, uh, and in this mission, uh, the Redeemer and his three Condemned characters are trying to escape the Undercity and head back to the surface. But let's take a look at the player uh, cards uh, and templates and what we're going to be starting this mission with. So we'll head over to them right now and have a look. Okay, so the gist of this game uh, is we have the four characters here and they have these really neat little uh, trays. Uh, and I'll explain how those function here in a moment. Uh, and there are six spaces, uh, one through six, and that will correspond to a die that is rolled. Uh, and we will place the die in these little boxes, and these are the stats for the round. So it's kind of a neat mechanic of the game. So here's our Redeemer. He has blessed ability. He has one special ability that he can only do once per, basically per uh, game. And he can either give someone a plus two combat, or plus one movement. He can only do that once, and when he does that, he can heal a line uh, of damage on one of the characters. So these six slots also represent their life as well as changing stats of movement, combat, and defense. So kind of a neat little way of looking after things. Now, in this scenario, the Redeemer starts off with the Aura of Courage, which is this little token here. And at the beginning of, the, of his activation, the Redeemer picks a target, uh, and he will be able to give them a plus one movement, plus one combat, and plus one defense. Now, you'll see the little two icon dice up here. If we put a two in here, he will be able to cast that spell. Likewise, he has another spell, the Aura of Precognition. And it's basically at the beginning, he can look at the top three tiles, decide which tile to put on top, and then he gets to, uh, the human characters get to decide uh, in which orientation the tile will be laid down. So normally, as the humans explore, they're the only ones that can explore a new tile, the demon player uh, gets to uh, orient the tile. We also have here a stack of advantage cards. Uh, if a tile comes up that has a little uh, chest icon box on it, they will be able to draw one card. They start the game with a grenade. This is randomly drawn from that deck. They start with one card, and it counts as an attack for using. Uh, a tile adjacent to the one that warriors are on, and they attack every war. Everyone's called a warrior in this game, whether you're demon or human. Uh, attack with two combat dice, so it's a one-shot uh, grenade. And one of the condemned blades for hire, and I'm going to say the guy with the dark hair. They actually have different colored hair to differentiate them. The models are the same. The hair color is different. He carries a blunderbuss, gives him a plus one combat, and he can shoot one space away. Now, how do spaces work in the game? Every tile is one space. So unlike uh, Descent or a few other games that have hexes on the tiles, in this game, one tile represents one space. Uh, and the starting tile, the Pentagon one, can hold five human players and five uh, demon players. Every other tile can hold three of each, and there are some narrow tiles that only hold one of each. So now let's go take a look at the demon character and see what he's got to play with. So looking here now, the demon player has uh, a board of abilities. And we'll get into these as we play the game. But basically, uh, the demon player gets to roll three dice at the start of his phase and allocate the dice to the certain boxes. Some of them have uh, specific numbers. So if you rolled a seven, for instance, you could put it in, the, in this box, activate that ability. And here's the troglodytes, uh, health status, they have one movement, one combat, one defense. And we'll go up here now and look a little bit at the models. So these are the troglodytes. Uh, there's 11 of these. They're actually pretty, uh, 
pretty well done models, I have to say. Some of the best models I've seen in a game pre-painted. And of course we have the big bad, the demon. Now the demon's represented by uh, different cards. In this particular scenario, and there's a whole bunch of different demons, the scenario has this as the demon. And we're allowed to bring two of them into the game. Uh, and basically has a health of four, movement two, combat one, defense of one, and a special ability. So we'll get into that as we play the game. There's also threat tokens. And the demon player for this scenario starts with four. Threat tokens are used to bring troglodytes and demons onto the board. Demons cost five threats to put on the board and troglodytes one. And the demon also has their deck of cards that they can draw from and they do all kinds of bad and nasty things uh, to the human players. And we also have this huge, huge stack of tiles. Now I've shuffled them all and they'll be drawn from the top as we move through the game. So now let me explain the scenario uh, and this will be, and then the next episode we'll get into the gameplay. All right, let's go back to the little board with our human characters on it. I'll explain the scenario, what needs to be done, and then next episode we'll get into turn one. So for this scenario, basically the humans are trying to find their way out. Now there's a 10-sided die here and the demon places it at one of the locations that he wants. And it's on a one right now. So what that means is um, when this tile is explored, the demon will place the die and ratchet it up to two. Once they explore uh, tile number 10, then they will find the exit tile. And the exit tile looks like this, if we can get the glare off. So there's the exit tile. They are trying to find their way out of here. Now, of course, the demons are trying to kill at least two of them, because if the demons kill two of the human characters, then the humans lose. Uh, I believe, or if they kill them all. I forget exactly. The only way the humans can win is to get out, get two people out. That's their mission. Okay, uh, any other special rules? That, that's called the breath of fresh air. So they're trying to find their way out of these tunnels. Uh, and the demon special rules I mentioned before, they start with four threat, uh, and they can only bring two of the underground hunters into the game total. And there is only uh, one allowed on the board at any one time. And I will, I will explain the rules as we start to play. So basically that is it. We're gonna be starting up episode one. Uh, hopefully tomorrow I can get that loaded up. I'll show you how the gameplay works. I'll go briefly, I guess, right now. Uh, we'll look at the book here on the phases and then we'll leave it off uh, for the next episode. Okay, so playing the game. I'll just try and see if I can get this in focus here. The game is made up of uh, rounds. And basically each round there's an initiative phase. And it's during this phase, a human player will determine stats of the warriors. That's where they roll dice and put them in the slots. And the human players have an action phase. And during this phase, the human players, warriors, will move, explore the tunnels, and combat troglodytes and demons. Basically, uh, the humans and the demons can move and attack, attack and move, or they don't have to do anything. They can attack and not move, or they can move and not attack. It's basically what they have to do. They have one move action, one attack action, Per round. Then we go to the demon phase, which is the threat phase. That's where the demons will roll three dice and assign them to that uh, the demon board. And they get to do things like put troglites into play, improve abilities, and draw event cards, depending on where they place the dice. And finally, the demon players have an action phase, which they can move demons one space and attack, uh, or depending if they can, they can alter stats, they can make demons tougher, they can make them faster. There's different abilities they have on their board. So, and it's, like I said, the gist of the game is to get, uh, the humans have to get out of here, and the demons are trying to stop them. So, with all that said, I guess that gives you a pretty brief overview of claustrophobia. It's actually a pretty fun, pretty quick game. We'll, so we'll do, definitely do a playthrough here till the end, till either one side is uh, vanquished, or the humans, two of them, escape. All right, that's it. Uh, oh, I should say it's Published by Asmodee, I believe they're going to republish this game again this year, 2014. Uh, there's also an expansion out already, which they're going to uh, republish. It's called De Profundus, I believe. And there is also another expansion, I guess, that is also going to be coming out brand new this year. So that should be pretty exciting. 
Anyway, join me next time for episode one of Claustrophobia, and we'll get the humans moving in the underground to see if they can find their way out of the Undercity and escape the demons. Join me next time. Thanks for watching. Thank you.